Hi, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm good. What's new and exciting, my love? Let's see. I just got back from a wonderful weekend. <laughs> of course, <laughs> wonderful hotel sex all weekend long. So it's quite wonderful. I'm very glad. Very oh, happy. honey, this yeah. is such great yeah. news. All you do is vacation and have sex. It's, this is like ridiculous. It's glamorous. It I really know, is. I it's, know. I feel like every woman should be enjoying this. Oh, yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. So I want to welcome our wonderful listeners, our dirty listeners. Oh. We, you know, we have to introduce ours. I'm Dr. Lemore Blockman. Hi. Hi. I'm <laughs> Luann Hernandez. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Thank us tonight. Thank you for listening. This is Sex and Dipity. And our wonderful dirty listeners, we're hoping that you're undressed. And if you're not, please disrobe this fucking instant <laughs> because you're desecrating our debauched, you know, sacred ground here. Right. Well, perhaps we can help you with that a little bit later on yes. tonight. <laughs> You'll have to reciprocate. <laughs> so what are we talking about tonight? I think what we're talking about are fantasies. What's oh. your fantasy? What's your what do fantasy? men fantasize about? What do women fantasize about? So, you know, and especially in this voice. I, mean, I know. Like, we should use this voice the entire time. I know. Through the entire show. It's getting hard. <laughs> it's getting hard already to maintain. That's what he said. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, oh. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you helped. <laughs> so, yeah. So, fantasies. So, what do you think? What's, you know, you start. What do you think? What do I think about my fantasies? Yeah, fantasies. Let's start with yours. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are filthy and awful. That's but terrific. I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, it's crazy because I giggle because I'm like, oh, I spend a lot of my day fantasizing. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah. I mean. Um, as you should. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a like sweet little like, oh, wouldn't it be nice to like try this thing out with Brett and like whatever. You know, just sweet ones, like having sex in different areas, like... Locations. Outside. So that's the thing. I realized the thing I really enjoy is having sex when I'm not supposed to. Like, any... Okay, like, so like, you know, sneaking into it, that's what you mean? Like, just like, grabbing an hour in between? Yeah, stuff like... like that? Yeah, stuff like that. Like, if there's a party going on downstairs, I'm like, hey. 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 Oh, I need, I need help with something <laughs> upstairs. Hold on. <laughs> Can you help me? <laughs> so that's like, that's a fantasy, or you were acting actually, out? On? Actually, I, I act those ones out. Okay, the ones that I would not act out usually in, involve like multiple partners and like yes. And yeah. uh, well, we'll get to why you wouldn't. But <laughs> it's okay. just it's it's messy and it's complicated and there's too much there's cleanup. Too much cleanup, and then once yeah. there's like all of these people around and. You're like you. You're just not focusing on your own pleasure as much as you'd like to. <laughs> once there's more, once there's more than one organ around, it's like I'm, now I'm not enjoying myself because I'm like there's too much. There's too much stimulus. I there's know too there's too much going on. You don't know what to do. But the thing is, really, they can be of service. You know, the more the merrier. But yes. we'll get to it. Let me just start and say that um, one of my favorite writers um, was Nora Ephron and. I loved her. And I think she was brilliant. And uh, one of her, one of my favorite um, quotes from her was, in my sex fantasy, nobody ever loves me for my mind. Yes, that's <laughs> true. Everyone's just so overwhelmed with desire my for my body. body. <laughs> <laughs> so, and basically what she depicted in this um, quote is really something that women um, really can relate to very well. I mean, and I, I'm not going to start with the, with quoting other professionals yet, but in general, the main thing that women crave is to be desired, to be looked at as, as irresistible, to be, that's almost half of the, the orgasm itself, to be just looked, to be coveted, to be adored, to be desired. And that shows itself in many, you know, empirical studies and also just Random questionnaires with women yeah. as to what their fantasy is. Let me start and say that Aristo actually kind of founded the whole idea of fantasy 
when he said, and I um, I want to quote what he said, he said that both sexes could be incited beyond any immediate need for sexual intercourse, induced by the memory of past pleasure. And so, you know, regardless of, of um, something that is right before you, imagination is what works for you as a trigger to your desire. And he actually didn't call it fantasy, but that's what he was referring to, which is fascinating. And, you know... Look at it and put it in the spank bank. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, the spank bank back then in antiquity <laughs> it was kind of a problem. But, yeah. Um, so he actually, you know, kind of realized that there was something going on there. That people are getting aroused without any reason obvious to the eye. Like, I don't understand I don't, why you have an erection right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on, you know. And it's like. I, I want to ask you, as someone that knows men, what do you think the male, fa- the, 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 the top male fantasy would be? Ooh. <laughs> I'm very curious about what this one is. I'm, oops, I'm getting a little excited. About <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, the top male fantasy. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Is it the... Uh, I read something about, like, teacher-student type of thing, like, submissive, dominant type of relationship. Well, yeah, there are a bunch of themes and stuff. But uh, there are a few factors, and it's so ridiculous, because to me, you know, when I'm, like, really going to line up what they um, supposedly fantasize about, it's so obvious that it's a fantasy. (laughs) Man, you can never deal with all these things. Oh, the threesomes? Well, we'll get to the threesomes, but it's it's funny that a lot of them were like explaining as to, and I'll get to the whole idea of the ideal woman and whatever that entails. I'm not. But, I'm not free. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm busy tonight. I'm busy tonight. <laughs> but honestly, um, so it was like the, so cliche in, in a manner that you really want to really. Uh, Lighten up, and you cannot deal with a woman like that. Forget it. <laughs> Go home and masturbate. So, you know, in general, it would be someone that, of course, looks like a model. the male fantasy. Well, not necessarily a model, but someone that really represents, of course, that's a cultural thing and whatever. But someone that commands dirty talk, first of all. I mean, that's a crucial thing. She should know how to talk to me and how to incite me and, you know, the whole idea. And, you know, of course, she needs to rock garters and lingerie and look great and all this, you know, whatever like, ridiculous was all, <clears throat> continue. <laughs> oh, please, check, check, check. I know, I'm like, <laughs> done. <laughs> of course, you know, uh, master the performance of pole dancing or anything that has to do with that. And, you know, bake a cake wearing nothing but her sexy apron. Yep. And yeah, I was all, that's I'm what you want. <laughs> I was like, I haven't heard anything yet. I know that I cannot. But I haven't done. It's all in me. (laughs) Done. Naked cake. Probably not the most sanitary. I know, with your little apron. It's really like, yeah. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, oh, that's what you want? Liar. You can't deal with that. (laughs) I know. Lies. I know. You tell me lies. (laughs) So, yeah, so that was like um, one of the things that many men kind of... Well, you know, all focusing on the visual. Of course. Yeah. And, w- well, it's it's pretty obvious that men are very visual, you know. And No. But Shut I up. cannot say that women are not. That's and that's right. a complete myth. And we'll get to it. But I want to start with something that was a big phenomenon in um, that started in the 80s. And that's something that um, everybody was introduced to, which is phone sex. That's a big, big side of fantasy. And oh. I want to really hear, what do you think? I mean, it's still, of course, a big, big factory. Some would say that it makes close to 50 million. What do I? Th- state wise. Th- oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you, yeah. like, the brain is the biggest sex organ, as we know. Well, so. the skin is. But yes. close. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Skin. Okay. Second biggest. Second thing. biggest. Yes. It's the brain. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, it's exciting and arousing. And 
when I introduced Brett to that, he was like, oh. What is How that? did you introduce him to that? I just started talking dirty. <laughs> well, I just started. Okay, yeah. Check, when check, he was check. away, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just like, hey. So what do you think? I mean, what do you think is so arousing about phone sex? Well, the, the idea that the person that's on the other side of the line is aroused also. Well, you think that the person that gives the phone sex is aroused? I think the fan, that's the whole... Well, the fantasy. Yes. Okay, so yeah, I want to hear what you think. Yeah. I mean, analyze it's it. the psych. It's the psychology that the other person on the other line is telling you all these things that they want to do to you, and you can imagine it, and they start, you know, you start making the, mm, that feels so good. I like it when you touch me there. Stuff like that. You know, you start doing... Are you moonlighting? <laughs> Am I moonlighting? I, I mean... You can, come on, you come clean. I mean... You Just know. say, okay. <laughs> I don't do it for pay. <laughs> That's a <I'm> shame. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so... Yeah, so the fantasy... The idea that I'm supposedly interested in what you really have to tell yes. me. and you don't have to worry about their face, like, oh my... God, like, ew, that's disgusting. Yeah. You know, you don't have to worry about that. But I'm saying, like, yeah, like, I really want to put my dick in between your tits or something like that. You're like, oh, you know, so, like, you let's don't have to talk worry. about it. Yeah, I don't you know. know. You, you don't know. have to worry about the, per it's the same, ow, uh, it's the same type of thing as like a person would get with pro a prostitute. Right, but that's a visual side. What I'm, right. what I'm uh, questioning is what is so, let's just because start and say, that the man, the 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 main the main um, audience is obviously male. Yes. I mean, there are hardly any women using phone sex. Yes. So, what what is so enticing about it? They can envision the person on the other line to be whatever they want them to be, right. however they want them to look. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the exciting I think that's part. That's part of it. What else is there? Anything that has to do? Because we said that men are visual. Yes. And then that kind of excludes anything visual. I mean, you have your imagination. Yes. But, but this is also, you know, it's, it's very sensual to hear someone's voice telling you things right. that they want to do to you and how that makes you feel. Yeah. You know? I mean, <laughs> I'm getting so I'm getting hot. A little, woo. It's a little so, exciting tonight, yeah, huh? I know, I know. It's like... So, honestly, um, these a, uh, 900 numbers, they call them, the fantasy lines. I don't know if they use, I think they're not using the 900 numbers anymore because you can't call them from cell phones. Uh, so, they kind yeah. of changed the whole system. Yeah, it became like a problem and they, they, uh, they changed it. But uh, there were a bunch of feminist groups that were oppo opposed to, uh, to the whole idea of phone sex, which I don't really agree with, but... Um, there was uh, something in, in Bernard College in 82 that it was uh, relating to the whole thing as the pleasure-danger controversy, which is on one hand, you know, providing a service. On the other hand, it could be maybe degrading to women or maybe putting them in danger. Maybe someone will stalk them or whatever. I don't really think it's a problem and you're selling a product. But what I find intriguing about this whole phone sex thing is that, um, and I'll, I'll read you from their manual. It was really a fascinating, fascinating research that I did on this. And um, the whole thing was based on the male perception of the ideal woman. As if it's like something so universal mm -hmm. that there's an ideal woman. What is What the fuck is the ideal woman? I want to understand. Mean we're right here. I don't... I know. We're free. Call us. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's like uh, the idea of the ideal woman is, is pathetic to me because there's no such thing. There's no such But you are still selling a fantasy of that. And then uh, the manual actually for, for the women working was fascinating and it said um, <clears throat> how to open and maintain a conversation. Oh, I want to hear. Yes. Start with the ideal woman. Let me, I have to get <clears throat> my, <clears throat> yeah, my voice. Then move on to the bimbo, the nymphomaniac, the mistress, the slave, the transvestite, the lesbian, the foreigner, the virgin. If the caller wants someone else, don't be insulted. Just be someone else. <laughs> That's I'm, smart. I'm, I'm going. Yeah. To start a conversation, ask, what's on your mind? 
Uh, what would you like to talk about? Never initiate sex, let the client do that. To keep them interested, tell a fantasy. Wild one, preferably. That should include... <clears throat> <laughs> honey, jello, travel, ice cream, lesbian love, orgies, <laughs> and so on. If the conversation remains clean, tell a story about movies, books, and all sorts of things. Insist that it's a true story. Be professional. Don't speak to anyone else other than the caller. What do you think? <laughs> I thought he was just being my <laughs> What I find interesting is that... Um, I don't know, the transvestite, the transvestite comes before the virgin or the foreigner. It's kind of... But okay, if that's, uh, that's the fantasy. But the idea is really, you know, again, going back to the ideal woman. I mean, everything that, that was uh, detailed in this manual is kind of so stereotyped. And so, you know, include this, include that, orgies, lesbian sex, I don't know, jello. Jello. <laughs> It was like, it's it's, it's was not as fun as it looks. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not as, and there's a lot of cleanup. Yes. But, um, so the whole idea of using women's language or, you know, terminology to turn you on as, as, as a selling, you know, um, edge was, was actually analyzed very intensely by many um, people in, the, in this um in this industry, and uh, Robin Lakoff is a big researcher that said that uh, she was she came up with the dominance approach, and she said that among other things, of course, phone sex as well, but in general, women's speech is is representative of powerlessness. That everything that women say, the way they use um, questions, tag questions, the way they use. Uh, specific words like, oh, wonderful, beautiful, the way they try to sew or, or that, or, you know, like use connecting words that are giving you a bigger admiration or other relation to, uh, to speech were really kind of firming and affirming female powerlessness. What do you think? Do you think it's it's true? I mean that that that's what actually is so sellable about phone sex as a fantasy. The women are presenting themselves as powerless. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you're basically at the. I mean, it's just like any other sort of uh, exchange for sex or sexual performance or arousal. You know, you're there for service. Like okay. you're there at that man's service. Whether you're <clears throat> taking off your clothes in front of him with a stripper pole. Right. Or you're having sex with him or you're trying to excite him with your language. Like you're you're basically there at their service. To do so what men is. are seeking is powerless? Is power? Is powerless women? <clears throat> Not, is I don't a- think, I don't think it's. I think that's the element that takes place societally. Okay. But I think that what actually turns a person on varies. And like whether you're whether you're on the phone and you're being like, I need you to take off your pants right now. And then I want whether you you're to Whether you're being dominant or Yeah. I mean yeah. that's like <clears throat> that part isn't the like there's the societal aspect of what's actually occurring, the yeah. process. Yeah. And then there's the actual fantasy part. And I don't think that the men are consciously seeking that like powerlessness of the woman no. um i don't think they're necessarily consciously seeking it but i think unconsciously they probably like it sounds you know that's what they're doing because they have to pay in order for this to occur you know because oh of course yeah you know because <clears throat> obviously they Money don't have somebody is a big to do part it. of it yeah of course so you're buying something yeah it's you know, a you're buying a you're buying the product but if it's somebody that you like if it's outside of that you know monetary exchange then it's a totally different the element completely and so i think that comparing phone sex that you pay for to phone sex that occurs within a romantic relationship or yeah, a dating relationship a that you can't you know you can't do that and i think that the the elements that are going on there like what is turning the person on 
isn't necessarily that they're paying for it. It's what the person's saying, which could be a myriad of things. Right. You know, and... But they're both fantasies. Yes. Whether you pay for it or not. Yes. I mean, you create a fantasy while talking, you know, dirty talking on the phone or, you know, selling uh, something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, we still haven't touched the, 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 the idea of what do men, you know, how do men uh, differ from women when it comes to fantasies? And so a bunch of, of course, studies related to what do men fantasize about, what do women fantasize about. You want to give it a shot? Oh, God. <laughs> Men are very simple. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I know, they really like to fantasize about, like you said, the ideal woman that they're having sex with or okay. their partner. I think actually, I think when people are in relationships, when they're like in the like exciting part, they're kind of still envisioning their partner for a while. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but then I think it just goes into like multiple people and... Multiple partners? Yeah, multiple partners. Okay. And um, outfits and situations. And, <laughs> <laughs> and women. And women. What do you think women oh. fantasize about? Well, there's I'll, the of whole... course, give you everything, all the scientific part of it. Yeah. You know, I think it's the, uh, like you said, the desire. Being so desirable that a man can't control himself. He just, he just has to have you. He just has to have you. Right now. I know. I can't wait. I mean, yeah. Like body heat. Like, let me break the, the door open so I can just take you. Exactly. <laughs> but another question that I want to refer to and, um, and ask you what you think, just out of, um, out of whatever comes to mind. Um, when do you think women in, and, and versus men, uh, mass, when, do they, when do they fantasize? During masturbation, intercourse, both? What do you think? When is it taking place? I know, I'm like, from personal experience, yes, both please. times. <laughs> like, depending both. on the partner. Sometimes it's like, I'm like, be anybody but who you are. <laughs> oi, oi. That sounds really bad. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, you're, you know. Uh, I'm like, like I'm, a, I'm a dry desert, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, be anybody else. Well, you know, but you've been with someone for a long time. It's like, you're, yeah. you're, you're like been doing the same thing over and over again. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> you're like, please just make it stop. You know, it's like, oh, it's Wednesday night. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what that means. It's time for that. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> studies show that um, approximately 95% of society fantasizes. Men tend to do it more often in regards to, in relation to any situation. And that means that they can see a hot woman on the street and they can fantasize. Women tend to do that less, not as common. Mm -hmm. um, both sexes uh, used fantasy while having intercourse. Mm -hmm. um, and when it came to masturbation, mostly men had more to do with, with fantasy, even though I don't necessarily agree, but this is what scientifically... What uh, people report. What people report. I don't know, yeah. you know, I, mean, I, I tend to disagree with the part about masturbation because I think it's a big part for... Uh, it's a big chunk of, of, of fantasy being uh, taking place there for yeah. women, in my opinion, pers both personal and oh, It's like, whoa. I was all, I have a whole exciting life when I'm double-clicking my mouse. Um, yes, <laughs> please, let me just go through my Rolodex here. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, my spank bang. Mm -hmm, here we let go. Let me see what I'm looking at, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... And then when it came to, I'm going to go over the themes that are actually uh, the main themes for uh, fantasy for both sexes. But what men were mainly fantasizing about was group sex and anonymous partners. Someone that you don't necessarily know, but as we said, depicts the ideal partner. And group sex was a main, main thing. I mean, most of them reported that they would like to be with Multiple in a harem men. of no <laughs> well i mean like because sometimes that's that's also one of the fantasies well right? yeah you know a few men having sex with one woman was also yes. yeah a part of it but most of them preferred to have 
some lesbian action going on in their presence. Like and they could handle more than one woman. Yeah, Let's be some of real. them cannot even handle <laughs> one, but okay. Um, depends who that one is. Yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so group sex in general was a main thing with men. And with women, I find it interesting and, and kind of intriguing. Um, the two things that were more appealing were, one, uh, sex with famous people. A very interesting yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, no. sex with famous people. They just, you know, picked, oh, this celebrity... He's on my bucket list. I want to have sex with him. You know, that would be my main fantasy. I would fantasize about, I don't know, who's hot. Um, I don't know. I love John Hamm, Alexander Skazgard, Joe Mangianiello. These people. <laughs> well, I'm like, okay. Well, do we need more so or John we John Hamm. Okay. Now, like, him I know. The others I, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm living in L.A. But okay. Um, so John Hamm, fantasizing about him. Okay. So like. It had to do with a certain maybe character in a movie or someone specifically just, you know, features or whatever. So that was a main thing, which wasn't which wasn't that common with men that I find interesting. That I mean, they weren't odd. fantasizing about yeah. they were fantasizing about anonymous women, but not necessarily about Megan Fox. I don't know. Like, That's or, interesting. Yeah. Um, so women did uh, report that they were fantasizing about famous partner. Partners and the other main thing was uh, same sex uh, lesbian lesbian sex. Yeah, what do you think? Does that make sense? Well, it's kind of like these taboos that people. That's one of the great things about fantasies. You don't actually have to do them. They don't ever have to actually be possible. So you think it's because of some social taboo about? Sure, I mean that makes it a little sex? more exciting. I think that they're... That's I think, the source of that fantasy with women, do you think? <clears throat> well, I also just think that the female body is much more attractive than the male body. Let's well, just be real. That's a yeah. given. Yeah. Yes. But, okay. <laughs> like, let's just be real. <laughs> let's, just be real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's just keep it... Yeah. Yeah. It's but, not... You know, it is... I mean, there's something very erotic about the female body with its, you know, more rounded texture and, like, the curves. The flow. The it's flow. by far better. Yeah. Yes. It's more like water. Yes. And... Yes. Men's uh, bodies are like, hopefully, rocks. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. hopefully, hopefully, it's just nice chiseledness and rough <laughs> it's getting edges hot. and yeah, yes, rough edges. <laughs> and, <sighs> okay, so um, so yeah. I want to refer to because I find it interesting, and as a woman and as uh, someone that is involved in mental health and. You know, likes to analyze this this whole situation. I find it very interesting, and I went and checked, and um, there are many many uh, sources that regard to female sexuality in terms of of um, same sex or or uh, the opposite sex. And I did uh, find a, a massive source of of same sex interest in women especially by um, a very uh, remarkable uh, theorist uh, called Lisa Diamond. And she wrote a book called Sexual Fluidity, which you probably that's actually, heard of. No, well, that's actually my theory of sexuality. So okay, yes, yeah. so yeah. So women are, and I agree with everything she writes there, women are, I'm not going to go into it because I want us to have a show about female desire yes. in general because it's so vast and there's so much to say. But... Um, so female sexuality is, is fluid, meaning that, um, yes, we are born with an orientation. I don't want to go through the whole thing. I'll just touch that subject that women, uh, and that's why uh, every heterosexual porn movie uh, has a lesbian scene and not a gay scene because uh, sex, sexual relations between women are not only appealing to men, but to women. Because women find other women attractive, most of them will not, you know, attest to it. But uh, unfortunately, because it's a very normal and functional part of female sexuality. And so because it's fluid, women uh, sometimes are very confused about it, but they don't really know what to make of it. That all of a sudden, you know, they are heterosexual. They love dick. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, the, the next door neighbor is like, ooh. She's hot. You know, I, like I would, that. yeah, I would invite her in. Mm -hmm. 
So, and you don't know what to do with, with, with that information. You know, it registers that you are aroused, but you don't know what to do with it. It's kind of weird. So let me just calm everybody down and say that female sexuality is fluid and that makes sense and, and the whole thing. So that fantasy about being with another woman is a very common... Natural. Very, not, very natural, very common thing with women mm-hmm. and, and a very big theme when mm-hmm. it comes to uh, female fantasy. So there were uh, four themes that were main when it comes to both sexes. One was um, images of imagery of having sex with the ex or someone that you fantasize about or imaginary. Like not even anybody, let's just say, and I'll, in, in, in a few minutes I'll get to the whole romance novel, which is, but mm-hmm. let's just say that I'm fantasizing about Christian Grey. Okay, so I'm, di- I'm thinking in my head that he looks like John Hamm and, you know, and then we'll have wild sex in his dungeon or something. Okay, so that's the image, that's the imaginary um, partner that I'm thinking about. Both men and women do that when it comes to that. Um, the second um, preferred theme was um, sexual power and irresistibility. So again, we're going back to the whole idea that I'm irresistible and men are just attacking me with their penises. <laughs> they just can't get enough. It's just so Come much. Come at me. I don't know what to do. I know. It's like insane. So that was the second theme. Um, the third one was different positions or different locations, as you said, or, you know, settings, different settings. Different settings. <laughs> you know, it could like, be ooh. on the table, on the table. <laughs> Cabana. No. Cabana. <laughs> on, you know, on a, a hot tub, hot tub on, right next on to a beach. pool, on the yeah. beach, on a banana leaf. Yeah. All yeah. of that applies. On a boat. On a boat. <laughs> on a, would you, could you, on a boat? Would you? I don't know. I'm getting seasick. Just, <laughs> like, am I facing the ocean? <laughs> I'm like, you know, it's like traveling against the yeah. direction of, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. And the last one uh, was about being either submissive or dominant, mm-hmm. which I find very interesting. And I think that to me, it's one of the main themes when it comes to both sexes. The dominant versus submissive theme is a big, big one. More to me than the position or yeah. settings. Well, I think they kind of go intertwined a lot yeah, of times. Uh, that's like true. The, the whole like... Uh, setting of the office right the There's office the, yes you're doing it at the office okay you call in your the boss secretary. calls you in your secretary calls you in a and colleague you go, calls you, you in what oh. did you want yeah just, <laughs> uh, let me just take notes do i need to work late today you know <laughs> do I, I thought you were gonna say do i need to wear latex oh <laughs> it sounded like i know that's where that's next that's the second that's that's the next one <laughs> with the, i know with yeah. the whips and chains. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, yeah, the, uh, very interesting. I mean, the submissive or the dominant part was very um, common. And I find it very relevant and very true, indeed. Uh, but I want to get to the romance novel. And no judgment, no names named. Uh, I said the name of the character, but I don't want to refer to a specific novel. Uh, everybody knows what I'm talking about. And I'm not a big fan of romance novels. I find them, uh, but I want to ask you, what do you think? Why is that such a phenomenon? I mean, is that really what women fantasize about? These long drawn out romances? I feel like no, it's like- No, the, 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 the idea of it. I mean, not the novel itself, but there's a reason why it's selling like cult wise. Oh, do you mean the submissive dominant theme in the romance no, novel? No, I'm talking about the whole idea of the romance novel in general. Oh, well, I think it's safe porn. Wait, like what, what does that mean? Like, you can walk outside, there's and a picture, read it. and read it, and you don't have to worry Not about... Not be judged. Yes, okay. it's the judgment. Okay. Like, if you walk outside with a hustler, everyone's like, oh. Yeah, uh, look at that, look at that. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah, exactly. With hustler. With hustler. I mean... Especially hustler. Yes, <laughs> it is very exciting. Yes. Not I much love, to the imagination. Yeah, no. 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 Everything is out in the open. So, yeah, so you think it's just safe porn? Yeah, I think it's just safe porn. I think that's so, why women, a lot of, I think a lot of women have a lot of uh, insecurities about 
exploring pornography in general. They feel like, oh, it's just, it's awful. I mean, and there's... So I can get wet in my living room or at the pool reading that specific novel that we're not naming uh, and getting aroused without admitting that I want a tall, dark stranger touching my vagina. Yeah. Handcuffing me down at the bed and doing all sorts of... Face fucking me. Exactly. (laughs) Or titty fucking me. (laughs) Titty. Yeah. Okay, so um, I agree with everything you said, but I... uh, And there's an additional side to it, which I really tend to agree with. So uh, Tanya Modleski wrote a book called uh, Loving with a Vengeance. And she really analyzes the whole um, idea of mass fantasies and how they are sold to women. And there's something very interesting because I'm sure you're familiar with the Harlequin uh, romance novels from the 50s. Actually, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. So that was the, the father of, the founding father of all the rest and the ones that we're not naming right now. Right. But in general, here's the theme of the Harlequin romance novels. And you'll tell me if it sounds like down to the last detail. So a poor to moderate, you know, status woman, young, inexperienced, beautiful, uh, falls for this wealthy, strong, handsome bastard. Now, she's smitten with him, but she uh, she's really uncomfortable with his behavior because she doesn't know. I mean, he's sending different messages. On one hand, he's obviously interested, but then he's kind of brutal and not attentive and maybe, you know, a little insulting and maybe, you know, even forceful in a way. Eventually, you know, of course, he uh, just comes out with his love to her and everything ends up in a lovely fuck bow and, you know, a traditional, you know, Asian massage, you know, happy ending kind of thing <laughs> with the climax erupting all over the heroine's uh, tits. Okay. okay, so in general, does that sound familiar? Yes. Okay, down to the last detail, yes. right? <laughs> so the thing is really, this is how the Harlequin novels were written. And nothing really changed. I mean, women are consuming this genre, which is specifically exactly, exactly the same story. Only the names change. But the same story is being marketed to women since the 50s. Mm -hmm. And I find it very interesting because is it really, does that have to do with the fact that they can masturbate quietly or get aroused without admitting to watching porn? Or is there something more to it? And the analysis says that there is something more to it. And um, <clears throat> I, I tend to agree. And uh, what Modlaski in her book says is that um, women find it, you know, the idea of that, that they can be that, that woman that is taking, being taken care of and being, you know, the little, little demure thing that is being taken and, and uh, you know, Possessed educated. and educated <laughs> is something that really, and again, that this whole, and she uh, relates to a commercial that was done back in the, I guess, 70s for these Harlequin uh, novels. And that that um, that commercial was, uh, had a woman lying on a bed, uh, reading that novel and talking to the camera and saying, I'm ready to go into, into my disappearing act. Yeah, something very seductive. So the disappearing act is actually <clears throat> this escapism that women go into. But do they do this only with romance novels and as a fantasy? Or will, or, or really in real life, they're trying to uh, go into this self, selflessness. I mean, this, this position of being selfless, that is what these novels are selling. This, this is the message that novels are selling to women. And actually, you know, the whole idea of self-subversion and surrender is the main thing with these novels. And that's, is that really the, the female fantasy? Women want to be controlled and possessed and, and subservient and um, all of the above? Sexually? That they want to be... Sexually? Sub- well, the, 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 the sex is a big part of these romance novels, yeah. as we know. But in well, general, is that like a secret fantasy? Is that something that because of 
female power we cannot admit anymore, but these novels are selling like hotcakes. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't even know. Like, it's kind of weird to me to think that, you know, sub, the submissive role is something that women would fantasize about. But then it's, it's also kind of perpetuated in different areas that women are subservient. And that's what makes her desirable is this kind of like... Two men. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like that's marketed to women from an early age. Okay. That they're the that they damsel in distress type of thing. That you should be subservient because then men will want you. Yes. Okay. And so it's, it comes back to this whole thing of wanting to be wanted. You know, the whole desire <clears throat> aspect where it's like they want to be wanted and they want to do it at whatever cost possible, even if it's at the expense of themselves. Okay. So that's where it comes from. That's what I think. I mean, based on some of the stuff that, you know... Just putting it together, like listening to all of it and thinking about it. I, ultimately, I think a lot of women want to be, like we said, desired and wanted and just unbridled passion <laughs> for somebody, you know? <laughs> Let me just tear you to shreds. Okay, so Susan Brown Miller uh, wrote in, in her book, Against Our Will, which was released in 75. It's an old book, but she said that, and I want to get to a very... Uh, strong subject when it comes to fantasies, she had a theory called the reflection theory. And she said that women have no fantasies of their own, that they're all male-fed uh, fantasies. Uh, and in specific, she related to rape fantasies. Hmm. And she said that when women are said to experience rape fantasies, they are actually being fed these fantasies by men that are fantasizing about rape, raping women or being, you know, dominant or taking women. Um, and that's what it, where it comes from. That, that has nothing to do with actually with women's minds of their own, but actually something that is perpetuated by uh, the male counterparts. What do hmm. you think? I mean, it's kind of one of those things that's kind of hard to separate out. Like, where, where are all of our thoughts coming from? And where... What do you think about the whole, but let's go to the rape fantasy. Because to me, it's a big, big chunk of the fantasy world. Oh, Do women is. fantasize about being raped? Yes. I think that's one of the top fantasies, actually, based on things that women report, is that they call the force fantasy. Right. It's like um, maybe being coerced into some sort of lack of control. Maybe not necessarily, um, you know, maybe not necessarily being raped. Per se. Per se, but just being taken. Okay. And again, consumed, like that your partner's consumed with desire and they can't handle not being able to have you at the moment that they want you. And I think it's a very common fantasy and, um, yeah, I don't think, I mean, I don't. In terms of, I don't think that we should judge our fantasies too much because sometimes people... No, judge not at all. I mean, yeah. it's whatever we fantasize about is by all means acceptable yeah. and should never be judged. What I'm, what I'm interested in is trying to understand, do women actually indulge in these forceful fantasies or are we being fed as women by, by you know, the, the, the patriarchal society or whatever, uh as to what we're supposed to fantasize about, and then it just it grows into believing that it's our own fantasies or not. I mean, that's, well, that's a question. That's also a thing that's hard to kind of dissect in general. Like, where, where would you get topics for fantasies unless it's from the world around us? Right, but in specific, the right fantasy, um, I, I, here's what I think, and a lot of studies support that. But I do think that um, a bunch of them, first of all, American women in specific, uh, are twice as likely than men and other women in other societies to uh, fantasize about being, being done to, done to do, being done to. I mean, that's, that's how the term uh, came to mind. And uh, what they, uh, the, the, um, the um, researchers found is that women are actually indeed fantasize about the rape fantasy or the forceful fantasy um, very commonly, like down to numbers of like once a week, uh, women reported having forceful fantasies. And with the women reporting them, 62% reported 
to have uh, no, you know, aversive side to these fantasies. I mean, they were by all means something that they were interested in. Mm -hmm. The, the researchers also went and examined whether these women had any experience with coercion or you know being being attacked as as, as younger women or you know just uh, dragged into a forceful sex in any way none of these factors actually showed any significance in terms of, of the the results so I do find and and of course as I said the theorists are very um, very ambivalent about it because some actually say and mostly feminists uh, say that it's not true that it's actually the you know males are, are feeding us these fantasies and I say it's not true I say women do fantasize about being taken or forcefully and the main reason would be because um, rape fantasies really remove guilt and to me that's the main part about fantasies especially to women and this is where I'm going back to the romance novel you don't feel guilty if you are being taken. You don't feel guilty if you read about being taken. Yeah. Um, and that's like a common uh, thing, a common theme in these books and in these fantasies where women just feel more comfortable being in the possession of being taken. Yeah. But... Um, <clears throat> and usually in these fantasies too, it's like somehow you're getting pleasure out of this whole thing. It's like I just oh, you really have to. to. I, mean, I really just need to pleasure you right now. Like I yes, not, let me let just, me just let me just let me just go to town. Let me just go down at the Y for <laughs> go to know, town, no, yeah, let baby. Me go, <laughs> let me just down at the Y for the next hour and a half. It's like you know, okay, that's, just stay <laughs> down there. Okay, yeah. I agree. I mean, I agree. I mean, um, <clears throat> that is that is uh, very true. And in relation to that, Maslow actually put it into a very interesting... Uh, he divided these women with their um, preferred fantasies into a few, uh, three groups, actually. And he said that women that uh, are endowed with high self-esteem usually um, <clears throat> sought to be dominated, which is interesting. I mean, if you have high self-esteem... You're not interested in the. You're not interested in, in taking charge, but you are interested in being taken. Yeah. Which is a, a very interesting idea. He said that mi mid self-esteem women, women that were not like in the middle, were fantasizing about being seduced, and that actually women that had very low self-esteem had a very uh, big tendency towards sadomasochistic uh, fantasies. That's so interesting. Isn't that? How do they separate the low self-esteem and high self-esteem with? Well, I guess questionnaires about other aspects of your life and in terms of... No, but I mean, how did they <laughs> separate the sadomasochism desire from the force desire? Oh, well, most of them fantasize about, you know, tying someone and gagging them. Oh. <laughs> so okay. actual restraints. Actual, yeah. And, and that is interesting because in, if you, in real life, if you are uh, a little less confident, it seems, uh, you would fantasize about taking charge and tearing apart someone else, which right. I find fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, and also when, when we, uh, there are a few other theorists that, uh, that related to other aspects of sexuality, but... Uh, what do you think? Do you think that women are feeling guilty over fantasizing? And does guilt play a factor with fantasy? <clears throat> I think it does. And I think it's interesting because I don't think a lot of people share their fantasies with their partner because they're afraid of being judged. They feel guilty for doing it because they feel like it's abnormal to be fantasizing when you're having sex with somebody else. What does that mean? When you're having sex with somebody else? No, no. What What do you mean? Um, when you have When you have a partner, you should be guilty if you fantasize. No, 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 no. I think a lot of women feel guilty, and that I that in and their I, fantasy there's someone else. I think even just that they're. Oh, fantasizing. I'm trying to understand what. Oh, you no, mean. no, no. Just even that they're fantasizing, like in per general. Se. Yeah. Okay. That they, you know, there's this like misconception that you're that if you have a partner or the person that you're with at that time. Mm -hmm. is your end-all and be-all of your sexuality. It's like, yeah, no. Like, so you know, what, there's exclusivity when it comes to, to your mind? But I think that some people think, and I think a lot of people do think that. And I think it's a little bit of a, 
insecurity that men and women have that their partner could fantasize about another person and leave for this fantasized person. But it's imaginary. It's imaginary. It's like an imaginary thought in my, in my head. Um, but I do think, like, I mean, the way I see it, it seems like it's an imaginary thought. But, you know, I do think that fantasies, women do feel a lot of guilt about fantasizing. That we're, but, again, it goes into that whole, like, we shouldn't be having sex. Sex is bad. Sex is dirty. Like, good girls don't do that, you know, type of things like that. Good girls don't masturbate. Good girls don't have don't sex. Don't fantasize. Yeah, they don't fantasize. They just have sex to procreate, and their partner brings them their whole fulfillment. And that kind of goes into the whole, like, weird, sick, dysfunctional thing that we're fed by society, that women are there to be used by men. And that's, you know, a woman's... In this day and age, do you think it's still... Yeah. I mean, look at the wedding industry. Don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that puts, I think that puts our society back a lot at how much effort and, like, money is put into this industry to kind of be claimed by a man, to have your name taken from you, you know, to be... The women actually, um, you know, uh, are interested in that. That's, that's a someone, yes. something they aspire to. It is. It is something women aspire to, like to be Mrs. That's a cultural blah, thing. blah, blah, blah. That's, yeah. that's, that's definitely a cultural yeah. thing. Yeah, and I think that it kind of feeds into this whole guilt women have about being, you know, this whole, like, ownership type of thing that's, that's going on. You know, being... Mrs. Smith is my <laughs> ultimate goal. Like, my God, if you know. I can get my, his name on my mailbox, I'm my climax will never be the same. Yeah. Ah, yeah. that is just an awful thought. Well, but it's, I, but it's <laughs> again, you know, I, uh, it goes on, and it, I mean, I think a lot of the wedding industry, like these bridezilla things, these all of that stuff. It's kind of it's <sighs> it's this fantasy that I have achieved something because a man will let me take his name. You've achieved nothing, girlfriend. That is, that is uh, very sad and bad. Um, <laughs> Carol, you have ruined my high. I mean, you are, like, that was a huge boner again, killer. I need to, yes, <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, give me some hot okay. men around here now, right now. Okay, so the thing is, um, yes, uh, a lot of studies show that women that Uh, suffer from guilt when it comes to anything sexual will be a much smaller fantasizer. I mean, most of them will not allow their mind to go where their bodies are not, you know, allowed in. Yeah. So, and it's a big, big thing that um, women are not allowing themselves. It, it was, of course, more common with women, but men, you know, reported feeling guilty about fantasizing as well and in some couples actually fantasizing about someone else even imaginary was considered cheating and that's another thing that I wanted to hear your opinion about well we don't have a ton of time no we have just a few few minutes yes but fantasizing about somebody other than the person you're having sex with is it cheating no do you think people think it's cheating I think some people think it's cheating But I mean, again, like all of it goes on in the relationship. It's like you have to negotiate it. Like if the person... You have to has, negotiate if my mind is going no, 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 to actually go No, you have to negotiate. No, no, you have to <laughs> negotiate and talk about it. And I think that's the problem. People don't talk about the fact that they're uncomfortable and explore what that discomfort is coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, is it an insecurity? Is it, did my partner cheat on me? And now I'm concerned every time they're having, you know, every time there's a fantasy about somebody else that that's the person. Oh, that okay. So you something see what I mean? like, preceded. Like, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, you have right. to go in yourself, figure out what it is about this person fantasizing about somebody else or being turned on by somebody else that is affecting you so much and having you have that reaction or that right. you are feeling so insecure that you don't want them to fantasize. Because really, who cares? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm all... All right, it doesn't matter where you get your appetite as long as you come home for dinner. You know what I mean? Right, like, <laughs> yeah, just come and eat. Yeah. Come and feast. Yeah. Uh, but, well, the thing is, I, of course, think it's preposterous to think that if you fantasize, you're cheating. I mean, it's pathetic by all means. But I do think that, uh, well, you are talking about actually cheating in, in, in reality. And then, you know, that precedes, you know, admitting that you fantasized about someone else and that. Could create a whole situation. Yeah, whole shit yeah. ton of crap. Okay, yeah, ton of crap in other words. 
Um, but the thing is, really, I think some things should be kept for uh, as a fantasy. Oh. Some things should be shared. The main thing, in my opinion, is whatever makes you tick and whatever keeps you hot and bothered has a place in your bedroom, on your couch, exactly. on your... On your uh, on your table, under the table, <laughs> everywhere possible. Wherever you're back to the car, Just go like God. <laughs> fuck away as much as possible. And um, we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Okay, so um, we're inviting you to uh, write us and call us and, you know, uh, stalk us, lock us in the <laughs> trunk of your car. You Any can communication. Fantasize about <laughs> us as well. well <laughs> you can fantasize about us yep. being locked there. <laughs> Do you know I'm yeah. like, oh. Just, you know, throw a vibrator in yeah, there. Yeah, throw so a vibrator. Keep us entertained. Um, but truly, send us uh, your inquiries. We'll be happy to relate to them. And next show, we have a show about relationships. So we'll wait. Mm. But yeah, it's going to be fascinating. We're going to have a guest. And we're inviting you to send us your questions. If you have any questions about relationships or your lives are just perfect. Yeah. Or types of relationships, or you do want to share your fantasy with us. Yes, please. If you'd like me to read your fantasy online, please send it in. And send your uh, your card. Yeah, send your card with it. <laughs> so I truly enjoyed it. Baby. Yes, me too. Yeah. It was so fun. it was fun. And join us next time. I'm Dr. Lee Moore Blockman. And I'm Luann Hernandez. Bye. Bye.